Just Be an Earnest podcast is proudly presented by Goodies Hangover Powder. Summer's on the way, which means long days in the sun, which means more opportunities to be hanging with the friends outside doing some grilling or hanging by a fire. And if you're anything like me, those good times may turn into a little too good. Make for a rough morning. Things changed when I found Goody's Hangover Powder. I can still have as much fun as I want at night with my friends, knowing that Goody's Hangover Powder has my back in the morning to get me on my feet and feeling alert. Goody's makes it super easy for me. I simply have to pour the powder into a glass of water, throw it back, and boom, fast pain relief is on the way. Goody's hooked all of my listeners up with a discount code for $1 off a four-count pack on Amazon. Use my code one Ernest, the number one Ernest, E-R-N-E-S-T, to get your $1 off today. Outside the bar, we just got out, and man, in a matter of like 30 seconds, I just... You know, got out of hand, just <laughs> fucked the dude up, right? And I, uh, you know, I'm standing over him, just a few punches, really. Standing over him. He's standing over. I, him. I look, I look up. There's a f- undercover police officer right there. He's like, turn around. He was oh, just in no. street clothes, just happened to be on the street corner. Oh no! Saw the whole thing, really. So I go to jail. I go to the big house, DC. Like I'm, I'm in. I mean, I have blood jail, spattered jail. on my. We gonna go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> we gonna go. We to gonna jail hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just being earnest. Just being earnest. Just being earnest. Yeah, dude. Are we headphone it? You don't have to. You want to? No. Um, we were at uh we were at Losers just before we came here, which is a huge shocker. And <laughs> awesome. uh this podcast unofficially presented by Losers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was so funny. This this group of like five girls came and sat mm-hmm. at the high tops right by us. And um, they were sweet, and they were talking, and kept overhearing some conversation. This one dude came up and tried talking game to him. It's, it's me, Blue, and Foley, and uh, kind of looking over and whatever. Moved on. I had to take a picture, group photo for him, so yeah. now I'm involved. Yeah. You're part of the group. <clears throat> yeah. Like, I'm sitting here, but now I'm just a left elbow on the table, <laughs> just in case there's any open line of conversation. Well... It got really good really quick because the dude came back and he comes up and posts up, comes in hot and he's like, Where where are y'all from? And and they're like, I don't know what they say, but I answer loud enough for the table to hear. I was like, or no, he goes, What are we drinking? I go, probably a little space. <laughs> 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 he didn't hear it. None of the like the, there's one there's one beautiful bigger girl mm-hmm. right at the right mm-hmm. at the corner, but like she was the one with the real sense of humor on uh-huh. her because she was, ca- she was, and she was so as, soon as, as soon as she caught it, I was feeding her yeah. the whole time. So yeah. she, I was like, probably, probably a little space. And then, so I said, where are you from? I said, probably space. <laughs> <laughs> and he keeps talking. He dude doesn't, like, he could have been talking to a wall. Yeah. So we had already closed out. We're getting ready to leave. I said something about ROTC. I was like, oh, I probably got done just, just graduated <laughs> ROTC. Turns out the guy was serving. He was like, yeah, I served with a guy from Michigan. I overheard that. Yep. Anyways, not catching the drift. He wasn't. Mm-hmm. We get up to leave. And as we're leaving, all five girls simultaneously took a fake phone call. Wow. Like the whole table wow. was on the phone. And this guy's still talking to yourself. So he just stayed. He didn't. He didn't yeah. He didn't By the retreat. time we got to the truck. There was an, one of his homies had joined him. Oh, wow. Honestly, the, the guy, the dynamic at the bar, I mean, especially the, that's not really a bar situation. You're in a bar, but it's like lunchtime. You're there at what time? What, what, what time were you there? Before this? Right before this? This exist right now? Wow. <laughs> I love that. Does that already exist? <laughs> you guys are good over here at Just Being Earnest. Jeez. We got to fucking upgrade at the Y&K oh, yeah. Studios. Jesus. Dude. Wow. <laughs> fucking happened like eight minutes ago. I'm looking up. I'm like, yeah, that's basically the scene. Wait, that is Wait. the scene. <laughs> Who's that fat ass with my tattoos? Dude, you look like a fucking legend. You look like a legend in that. I took 28 pictures. Let's I, check this group out. I know to okay. get angles. Yeah. I like what's going on. So losers pretty laid back overall or what? Pretty laid back. There was a there was a really good looking girl there when we got there getting tossed from the bar. And the way she was talking to the bouncer. Getting tossed so early to get tossed. She was just dude, when you heard her talk, it was like you're not hot anymore. Like yeah. like all by all physical standards. Yeah. You're like, dang. And then you hear her talk and how she belittles the bouncer. I'm yeah. just like 
Honestly, when I talk to girls, I mean, been around a handful of girls sometimes. Have you? Yeah, decent. Just I would like, think you have. And if you do ever just have any trouble, holler at me. <laughs> no, I've been saying like that. Just like traveling and touring and just being around and seeing the bar scene and being immersed in it for as long as we have. Yeah. I feel bad for girls, man. Like, yeah. like the guys suck. Like guys suck. Girls suck. You know, you could make that argument on both sides, but like guys just have no feel for situation. Like, bro, it's so easy to read the, like if they're not. There's just there seems to be like it's a, not easy to read the room apparently. Yeah, there's a like there <laughs> seems to be a disconnect like on yeah. the masculine side where it's like, man, just read the room. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like let it flow, let it come. You know, guys just force and force and never. If you force, yep. Yeah, if you're listening at home, it's never a force. Never force. It's never gonna work. Never force. You're paddling work. upstream, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going right upstream. No paddle, Steve. That guy just needs to read the room a little bit, you know. Yeah, and I think you're right. That's funny too because like you know like masculine culture is being damned it's, and there's to an extent that's not such a bad thing because like what society deems masculine mm -hmm. is kind of whack anyway yeah it's i mean it's kind a whack. it's a weird it's a weird era we're living in you know? yeah <laughs> yeah We've, I've, I've lit like we did a thing called touring's boring I don't know if you ever saw those. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I mean, they couldn't exist now, which they don't. Put them no. off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Wipe those things they couldn't clean. Exist. And for those Never reasons. Never heard of it. And for those reasons, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, man. Because I mean, touring's it, not boring. It isn't boring. When we, and, you know, like, it was so, it was just so risque and raw and, like, definitely had a decent amount of, like, the common term toxic masculinity in the sense of, like, you know, it was just, there was a lot of girls around. It was racy. But my, my thing is this, like. It's better than being racist. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, but dude, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, like, the raciness, like, what I tell people is just like, man, at the end of the day, like, in, in person, when we had those experiences, like, yeah, you could cut up a highlight reel and it might look a little crazy or over the top, but like. We were just normal guys, man. Like, we yes. were just having fun. Normal guys. Like, we never had... There were never experiences where, like, the girls would walk away and be like, fuck those guys. You know what I mean? Like, yes. we were never like, yo, go here, hook up with my boy or get off the bus. Like, stupid shit that, like, right. happens in those groupie scenarios or just, like, the scenarios of touring. It was never that. We were like, yeah, we're just at the bar yeah, having the, a good time. The core, like, the core of everybody in this room right now, yeah. like... Knows the rules, yeah, so to speak, and and doesn't have to try too hard. But a lot of the fans, uh, I can't wait. The for fans that. make a huge assumption mm. of what people are like when the camera's off or when right. the camera's not. Rolling. Yeah, I think because we've been doing it so long, and like with all the avenues of, of content and just being out in the field so much, like so many, most of my fans, you know, especially being independent and. I got my fan right here. There you go. I got one too. Um, most of our fans are pretty aware of like how we rock and I operate, you know, like I think that's part of the whole thing is just like, oh, he's one of the guys, you know, like yeah. all these guys, like good guys, just one of the you guys, you know, going on tour with you and, and I will back up so we can kind of have a little bit of structure to this because, um, <laughs> structure's a mess. <laughs> yeah. Structure is, is not my thing, but, <laughs> but I would like for, for people that listen to the just being earnest podcast kind of get. They know my background to an extent. Yeah. But like, and we just did your podcast last week. It was a doozy. You never know. Yeah. Um, that, that era for me, that year, was that 2018? 2019? No, uh, it was 18, I think, right? It was the first month of 2019. It's January 2019. Um, that was like a pivotal year for me because I got to go showcase both sides of both corners of my room, so to speak. You mean with playing, musically? Yeah, musically, because I got to go play. I got to rap. It was just me and my laptop. Every night I'd go out there. Every night I'd go out there. And, uh, dude, Ash in the ukulele. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're dead serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now an ashtray. From now on, you should only Ash in ukuleles. Yeah, I'm calling, I'm referring to it as my ashtray. <laughs> yeah, you have to. Um, <laughs> So that was, that was, uh, Mike asked me to go on tour with him in 2019. I had no record deal, okay? So I got there. I had a bunch of rap songs and a couple country songs, one of them being Drink All Day. Jake Owen ended up cutting. Ever heard of it? Um, and you can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. Like, we would jam that on the bus. I remember Kilmer was like, Kilmer fact. loved that song. 
And um, I got to go try out songs for people. It was me and my laptop. And every night I go out there and say, yo, what's up? My name's Ernest. I'm touring on a budget. So uh, I'm my own DJ tonight. No, I'm going to press this fucking space bar and the show's about to get going. Boom. And then I'll be rapping for like 10 minutes, 12 mm-hmm. minutes. Pick up a guitar, play some country songs. Da 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 da. da. <laughs> <laughs> Head off, and, and it's time for the party. Your Wha- show. Wax some tequilas. Yeah. In the, in the meantime. Yeah. Yes. And then your setup came. And you had this Steve Sports Bar, <laughs> and we had a keg on stage. And th- that whole experience to me opened my eyes to uh, all the possibilities that I'm pursuing now. Mm. Of a, your country fan base is not what it used to be. Right. And country fans will admit that as well. Yeah. Your rap fan base is not what it used to be. And one thing everybody has in common, they show up to a show to party. Yeah. So just be the party. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, when, you know, when, when, right when we started out, like right away, we started touring and it happened like really quickly. What year? Was this one 2013? We we started, like, I think we started hitting, hitting, you know, the road, like 2013. I put songs out 2011, 2012, a little bit as an ass. I was still a baseball player. Yeah. Um, but that's it, when I that's when I you came across me. Yeah, yeah. My baseball homies. Because that's that was the culture. Like without the niche baseball culture, um, that because of I was immersed in and a part of, like they kind of championed it a little bit in the sense of like, yo, have you heard this dude Mike studies? He plays baseball at Duke. You know, like it's verbatim the spiel I got. Exactly. Taking BP down here at Lipscomb. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And and that's really what happened. And. Um, Without that, I, I really don't know. You know, like I was, I'm, I mean, I'm very, very, very amateur uh, at this time. I mean, I have to paint a picture. Like, I, I had, I made this song, the first song I ever made, or, or first song I ever, yeah, it was one of the first songs I ever made, but first song I ever put out was College Humor. And it, mm-hmm. I mean, it just, it just fucking worked in that space. Like, the, uh, you know, the college, remember like the day of the like music blogs? Like, um, yeah. Like good music all day, and um, you know, like even things like Bro Bible, you know, yes. like those types of things, like this whole college sphere. And I didn't even know it existed. Like yeah. as a list music listener, at this point, you know, I, I listen, I listen to rap, and I and I had no idea the subculture of like college music was even existing. Right. Till I was in it, you right. know what I mean. So it was a very strange thing, and then right away, it kind of ding 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 went off in my head like oh there's something here you like I, I didn't know exactly but like was it like a thing because i know on my college team i had three or four guys that would always come by my room because they knew i was on garage band mm-hmm. like yo snow show me the, show yeah, me the so new shit th- was strumming that guy for you yes 100 percent. i mean marcus like doug when i mean this is 2012 this or, is at duke yeah tw- 2011 at duke i think when when we start and and like, dude, I'm in a closet half the size of this. Me and Marcus, me and Marcus, like, I got blankets to help with the sound. Yeah, hanging blankets on a fucking hundred dollar USB mic. Yeah, on GarageBand, didn't know what I was doing, and he's just like my biggest cheerleader, bro. Like, Were you on- we would make songs together in the beginning, like just freestyle rap type things. But he was just like, yo, you could do it. like always. Yes, that's why we're so close, just because like he and was. It takes that because we're so in our own heads, does. like. I was saying, uh, me and Blue were talking about this before you got here. Like, the evolution of ourselves musically happens rapidly, especially mm. six, seven years ago yeah. when we we're first putting our teeth in it for real. Like, having somebody outside of your own head yeah. to either and and be honest because I bet there was shit he didn't vibe with yeah. as much as the stuff he did. Yeah, I mean, th- it was so lackadaisical <laughs> and not and and not like. Um, there was something so easy going about the whole thing that that really we kind of eased like eased into it. It was never I wasn't being hypercritical of myself. I didn't even fucking care or know. Yeah, yeah. Like I yeah. didn't I wasn't like, this isn't professionally mixed. This isn't on a good mic. I should oh, you know God, what I mean? Or no. or like, what are people gonna think about this? For whatever reason, I never had that. And it was pretty like you know, like there are people who like, like if you saw it and you liked it, you liked it, and then there are people like, "Fuck this guy, white yeah. rapper." That's a good way to know it's gonna work. Yeah, people love it. And yeah, and I didn't even it. know that yeah. then either. But <laughs> yeah. they were just like, you know, yeah. Mike Stud, white rapper from Duke, talking about fucking bitches and playing baseball, and sports references. But look, this is my point about this. Like, when I look back at it, I mean, I hear, I hear the promise in it. You know, it was very, very amateur. But like, when I look back at it, dude. 
it's the same reason people like me now. I think the music's gotten better. I think I've evolved. But I was being myself. Yeah. 100%. Yes. Through and through. Like, what else was I going to rap about? Yeah, no. What, anything else would have been a lie. Just happened to be fucking bitches and playing baseball. That was it. Uh, That's all I knew. Yeah. So anything else would have been false. Yeah. Anything else would have been a false narrative trying to be something. People would have felt it. It wouldn't have connected. Yeah. And for whatever reason, if you could relate to that, which there was a lot of college kids, you know, you could relate to it. It's the same reason you like any artist. You could like feel it when you hear it. You're just like, it feels real. You it's know, relatable like, too, because like, you know, like I was saying, your fan base is dope because it's guys like us and, and girls who like guys like us. So like, a lot of baseball guys are gonna love Mike, yeah. and that I think I think I'll have baseball f fans too. I hope to because I yeah. love to talk baseball with my fans. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But like the, my initial point of this whole when you talked about the, how the fans have changed, right? Like, even in the very beginning, it'd be like fifty people, but they'd be going fucking nuts. Yeah, they'd be going absolutely ape shit, and we'd be like, we'd, we'd be like just, small college, we'd be like looking years. around, like laughing, like what the fuck is going on? Yeah, he's like, going ape shit in like a, a bar. You know, fucking triple the size of this room. You know, Losers. like with a fucking yeah, yeah, like, and and they'd go ape shit, and it was never ever. And then when it even got, it got pretty big, pretty fast touring wise, like around the size you saw. You know, we got yeah. there like fairly quick in like three years. You know, yeah. but it was always, it was never a hip hop crowd. It never felt like like a country crowd, a hip hop crowd. It was just this like smorgasbord of like. In the middle, kind of, you know, jocks and cheerleaders. Every, like, the tone of it felt like a country tailgate in the sense of, like, everyone's trying to get wasted and, like, yes. Yes. score the hot bitches in the section in front of them and, like, go to the bar after and drink till failure. Really, like, yes. that was this whole culture. We like a good time. Yeah, yeah. That I don't was, care what's playing. It's going to make like, me have I a good time. I hopped right on tour. Yeah. And, I mean, I had fucking four songs with, yeah. like, 20,000 views and shit. I'm like... Yeah. Yeah, we got we're killing it. We're four for four. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but still, okay. So what would you what would you fill the? How long were your shows? That's what you I mean. Four songs. Are you doing covers? It made me an ama It really made me a way. You see how I perform? Yeah. I'm like borderline emceeing it. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. It's a I'm party. like yo. Like um, there's so much banter. I'm talking to the fans. They're coming up drinking. I'm chirping, saying whatever. Yeah. There's never like it. Never at any point is just like music flowing into the next song you know what i mean it's yeah, just like yeah. this it kind of feels like someone's emceeing and then i'll sing you know but but like there's this is true this this is really this is really how my style of performing got cultivated and it wasn't by strategy it was just i just went out there and like what i'm saying is like i had four songs we play like 30 minutes we drank a lot yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah, like of course and then i was bringing bitches up and you know what I mean? Or whatever it was. Guys coming up, chugging beers, blues coming out. This whole spiel, like, just kind of happened, happened because almost that. <laughs> blues out here overdosing on vodka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we Eight minutes in. <laughs> we almost overdosed on vodka a lot. Yeah. Um, but, dude, it, it just became this. <laughs> Stephen Mc It's more about, like, a enter it became more entertaining as an entity because the music was... You know, like really, it was like it was always lagging. Like it was always like I was, you know, we were making songs, touring, 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 touring. But like it wasn't like I had, you know, learning about touring and how it works. And like really, it did shape the way my performance style by going out and just winging it and like, you know, filling the time and then making sure like I could just feel the energy in the room. Like yo, everyone's having a good time. Right. You know what I mean, like. Yeah, what, read a room. What the fuck? Exactly. <laughs> like, what the fuck else yeah. do you want them to say when you when they leave? Yeah. Had a great time. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I don't know what songs you played. It's fucking awesome. Though. I'll do it again. When's he coming back? Yes. You know what I mean? And that, I leaned into that. I treated it like a campaign, bro. Like, going and playing 100 person shows everywhere. I played five. We'd fucking be in Montana for four days and play four cities in Montana. I've never even stepped foot there. And all of them were 100 person shows. Yeah. But then after. It's like, I liken it to this, like, it's like if a, a pro, like if fucking Kobe, now, you know, if it's a bad example, let's, let's leave Kobe out of this. Any, any, <laughs> ever heard of him? <laughs> any, any athlete, right? Like fucking Tom Brady, like he scores a touchdown, they win the game, he grabs the mic and he's like, I'll be right next door at the bar, come drink with us. Yes. You know what I mean? So like, 
obviously really small version of that, like a small show, but they're having a fucking blast. Oh, yeah. And, like, for whatever reason, if you are a yeah. fan of Mike Stead at that time, you're really into it. If you know of it, you came to a show and I only had, like, fucking eight songs. Yeah, you know now I, mean? I get to go drink with So you're excited, door. and then... I'm giving them a perfect, easy layup opportunity to come rage with us after the girls, the guy, everyone's had. So it like we when we left that town, I really felt like like almost like a campaign, like, yo, a bunch. We want a bunch of people over. Everyone was talking about it. The next, you know, what I mean, these small town Des Moines, Iowa fucking set the place on fire. We had a good run in Des Moines. I went back to Des Moines. Yeah, thank you, sir. Um, but yeah. you know what I mean? And like I quickly realized that was what was going on. And I leaned into it, you know, but it was who we were. I was a ratchet motherfucker. We were wild motherfuckers. All yes. we wanted to do is drink and be around girls and <laughs> be around fun people. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, 100%. That's all we were doing, bro. Like, I never, I never thought I was going to be a musician ever. Yeah. So when it happened, I, I wasn't taking it like, oh, my God, this is, uh, you know what I mean? I was yeah. just like, yo, this is fucking insane. Yeah, you know what we're, I mean? We're like, really out here. We're just doing this shit. And that's yeah. really what happened, bro. Like. Being removed from it, I've I've thought about it a bit more as I've gotten older. And it's, I mean, I'm so happy that I wasn't thinking and analyzing and oh, God. you know what I mean. Like, right. how 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 can we grow this faster? Who what are they gonna think? I never had any of those thoughts, bro. I really didn't. And you know, what about now though? Um, because you know the business side of it. Because like where I'm coming from, yeah, is yeah the luxury of not thinking of that is like the beauty of being young and naive. Yeah, which is. Where 100%. I feel like you get your sprint out, mm -hmm. but like when you do catch stride, there is yeah. there does have to be. Yeah, I, I would, mean I know as a team y'all are methodical as hell. Yeah, we are, and I love that about you. That's why I want. That's why I love that I fucking know y'all because yeah. Yeah, I can learn from y'all and Thank and you, and um, what you've built is incredible. But there has to be method now. Yeah, no, th there is, and and to be honest, there are always you know I, I went to school for business. I I enjoyed. Did you graduate, Duke? Yeah. 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 Uh, I enjoyed, uh, you know, I, I definitely enjoyed this when the money started to happen. And I was like, like, okay, how can I? I started to see what the money really was after the splits and the managers. And, you know, I've gone through all these phases where, I, like, now I, I really feel like I know, that, like, we've, you know, to your point of being methodical, like, we just did it out of necessity again. Like, mm. No one, you know, no one was running to us. Hey, can we help you? Like big lawyer. We had to kind of like, I kind of had to just like figure out how to manage the situation and manage the money and understand how can we monetize the fans? I think that's what we're really good at is just like the branding side. And, you know, I've had, I've been able to build out a very small team. They're all my buddies and we're all fucking idiots, yeah, you know, yeah, but like yeah, yeah. we all, fig team, though. we figure it out and, and we grow, we've grown. I mean, we're, we're adults, you know, I'm, in my, I'm fucking in my thirties. Like, so, you know, over time we've definitely become more analytical and methodical, but personally, like on the artistic side of my day to day life, I really, I'm, I'm actually, coming out of a phase going back into like a flow state of like yo i, I i'm just being myself yeah. i really do i've i've always i've always treasured that and thought that that was special uh that was important an important facet of like doing this the way we're doing it because it was very clear right out of the gate that i wasn't going to fit into any nook and cranny of the music industry i still don't yeah, like right. I'm, I'm kind of a no man. Like the way I, I've it's always kind of a good way to be though, because once you get in the nook and cranny, you got to stay in one. Yeah, or, yeah. Where people hella judge when you want to go do something else. Right. I mean, and you're, you're, you know, you've lived that because yeah. you can do both, and you know, you can do a lot of things. But you know, I can't take credit for it. I've definitely over the years have avoided making bad business decisions. There's plenty, a handful of times where I almost did. Yeah. And I've, I mean, dude, I. Oh, I, there's so many times I sit and I th I'm very, very thankful that I, I was cautious on my decision making business wise because, dude, I, I wouldn't I don't know if I would be doing this if I wasn't run if we weren't running it ourselves. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, like well, if, definitely. If I had players and these you probably. Other, yeah, you would not. I be. wouldn't like it. I'd you say, wouldn't Fuck have the you. freedom like, to be here right now. Yeah. I mean, everything yeah. I'm doing, every like a lot of the business stuff on the side and you know, podcasting and all the things that make, make me enjoy what I'm doing. You yeah. know, like, you know, I'm not a musician through and through it in my blood. I, I spent the first 21 years of my life never even thinking about making music, you know? What were, you listen, were you listening to rap that whole time? Yeah. 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 I always had a good ear for rap. Like I loved, like, it was from Northeast. So I, it was like, a like when you, 
you were spitting, spitting, and now, yeah. now it's more melodic. I know, mm-hmm. and like, but you definitely still got bars. Mm-hmm. Um, but rapping, rapping is, is that was my that was like that's my why shit. I love freestyling with you on the bus. Yeah, like, hey, let's hey reach in there and put some bust some bars. Yeah, out. you can fucking <laughs> rap with the best, bro. Um, personally, <laughs> shit. honestly, I I uh, I I I would say about three four years ago, personal music taste. I stopped fucking with rap as much. Like I don't. Nicole hard though. Yeah, and I'm, and I heard some of it. I heard it last night. I was on a wave coming back from the studio. I like it. I'm never putting that on though. And and like I'll say that. And and I'm I'm a huge J Cole fan. Yeah. I love him. I think he's smart. I think he understand. I think he's really dope. Yeah, he's and I, great. He's had amazing success, and he's the, one of the best rappers of all time. Yes. I'm saying for my where my life is and my mindset and my mind state day to day. I'm not like, yo, go put on that fucking J. Cole. I want to run through a wall. I'm just not. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? I'm yeah. not. I'm like, I'm, I'm on a peaceful vibe. You know, you've seen yeah. my switch into like, yeah. I like easy listening. And, and it really like, that's the only reason my music changed. And then I knew I wanted to change from Mike Stud to Mike for a while. But it wasn't necessarily tied to a music sonic change. Like the sonic right. shift. It wasn't about that it was necessarily. More lifestyle. It was more just like life and lifestyle. Yeah. And I knew Mike Stud had a ceiling. It was very pigeonholed into like college rap. Like, no matter what, no matter what I was making, if I was doing fly shit, there's so many people you can't quantify. Like, Mike Stead, fuck that guy. You know what I mean? Like, one, it's douchey and, like, cocky. and But also, it's very much so, it's been around and it was present enough to where you've heard of it. And you're like, isn't that that college white rapper, dude? You know, like, it always, I, I paid attention. The stigma. I've, is I've just, always paid attention, yeah. especially being in L.A. for so long and seeing, like, and under, I had some people, you know, behind the scenes would be like, yeah, like, that's a react, like, this new shit's fly, but, like, that's, that stigma is still hanging over this whole brand. And I knew it for years. I, like, I talked about change in 2016. Uh, for but real? I just, you know, again, I just kind of wanted to let it be in flow and understand, like, I knew a time would come when it would make sense. And it started to make sense a few years ago. So I've been... But that really, was right when right when I met you is when you were coming up with the artwork for having your own grave and all. Yeah, that yeah, shit. yeah. Like uh, the my, like a lot of my project for the homies, the stud light can poured out. Yeah, and like the typical like Mike Stud hater be like, "It's fucking guy, what a loser." Put stud. <laughs> the whole thing was like, it's for like pour pouring out for Mike Stud because yeah. it's over, yeah. you know. Yeah, and and that was kind of the ideology behind it, and and I was hinting at it. I wanted, I knew that like my fans are who I care about, you know. So in the sense of like easing them into it was important. And I, there was a long time I used the podcast as a sphere to kind of warm them up to the idea. Right. You know what I mean? But Mike, the name change isn't for those, my fans. Cause they're clearly that Mike Stud didn't bother them enough. Right, to, right, they right, became right. fans. It's about the rest of the fucking world. You know what yes. I mean? Like if I, and I, you know, had been working on this new sound and it is bigger sounding music, you know, it's a little less, you know, in that, not underground rap vibe that it was, but it kind of was. Like, these weren't, I wasn't making, like, mainstream rap songs, you right, know, right. like, with the trend of where urban music went. So it was kind of this, like, subgenre over here that I was in, and I knew that the music was shifting. So all of it kind of started to align and make sense, and I I, just, I didn't even think twice about it, really. Like, I was, the only thing was, like, figuring out what the name was going to be, and then, like, Post was actually the dude. He's just like, dude, you're Mike. Like, I've never met a more Mike yeah, Mike. Like, never, you know, of all the mics, Mike, like, no, you're fucking you Mike, know what I mean? dude. Yeah, no, I I feel you. That's hey. Ernest, you know. Yeah. One, uh, my, I, I was always like, you know, my name's Ernest Keith Smith. Yeah. Fucking Snowflow was my original nickname. Yeah. And I've told this breakdown, but not really maybe this matter of fact. Yeah. Snowflow was my first nickname. Mm-hmm. Fucking f- family always called me Kiefer. Fucking, you know, so S- Smitty was my baseball nickname. Hey, Smitty. So baseball. You look like a Smitty. <laughs> yeah, dude, definitely Smitty. So uh, when it comes to, I was like, all right, well, all right, I'm going to be an artist. Fuck. I'll drop this flow. Snow's cool. I, I remember said, no. when I met you, we talked about this. Yeah. Like you were Ernest K. Ernest K, because I didn't commit to was just I, Ernest. Was I one of the guys who was telling you to do Ernest or Ernie, or what was I saying? I think you were one of the guys who just do Ernest, drop the K. Yeah, yeah. And because um, Ernest K was still more r and b it was uh, urban you go, a little bit. Thank you. Um, my soul needs this, and my soul needed this. I was when we dropped up the, today. When we dropped the K. It's just <laughs> Ernest. Like my dad's name is Ernie. Like it's my name. I I, I feel more I comfortable mean. with Ernest than I ever felt with Keith. Dude, uh, like 
A hundred percent. And and back to the idea of like authenticity and comfortability with yourself and what you're doing. And if I, I really think the best brands in music are the ones that are just effortlessly them. You know what I mean? Yes, it takes it takes curation and a team to do it and execute it right. But like the guys who just like you just come in a room and you be you and that's the earnest brand. You get what I'm saying? I come in a room, be me, that's the mic. You know yes. what I mean? And I found myself like not wanting to say my name to people. Like I'd be on a vibe with someone talking to them. <laughs> be like, oh yeah, like or they heard some music, be like, what do you go by? Like, but like, <clears throat> Mike's dead. You know what I mean? Like hoping <laughs> hoping they just glanced over it. Like <laughs> and and I just realized I'm like, what the fuck? Why the fuck should that be the reality? Why should of this? I ever be ashamed of what I'm I proud of what I'm doing? As, like yeah. why at what like some part of my ego and like also like Letting business never let business drive the car. Like, yeah. like I had a lot of my legal and financial guys were like, "Yo, you, you shouldn't kill a brand that's growing." Like, we're literally looking at just the last five years of Mike Stud. Like, look at the chart of everything mon monetarily, like even streams, and you know, they're just like, I, I they all advise against it, but they're not in the field. They're not in that conversation when I'm literally having that, and I'm I'm embarrassed to say my name. Right. You know what I mean? And and it just didn't feel right. Even my all my boys was just like, yo, it doesn't even feel like. And it's grown. Yeah, yeah. And then the last piece again, you know, personally, my music taste changed. And I'm a, like, why make shit for anyone else but myself? Like, I'm yeah. not making music for it. The whole idea is I make it, it comes through me. I'm a vessel to these people and they connect with it because there's a relatability. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So if I can't relate to it and I don't want to play my own shit and I don't want to, you know what I mean? Like This shit right here is fact that's yeah i feel that way a lot that's how i felt too. and i was just like fuck this shit. who's this for you yeah. know what i mean and and i just started i basically just started making you know i talked to you right early in this phase mm -hmm. i had this idea of like because i love country music generally speaking like the ambiance when i'm outside i'm you know at, people have smiles on their face and we're at the beach and we're playing beer pong and what is that ambiance you know like that that's just that feeling that it gets that outdoor music, you know, like, yes. and, and also me as a person, like, yeah, I could rap. I could rap well, like if I really wanted to and oh, hone yeah. on my rap, like I could really rap my ass off for real. But one, I don't want to hear that shit. And two, I don't think you're coming to me for that. Yeah. Are you coming to Mike, the Duke baseball player for bars? Like yeah. 30 year old, like, yeah. Yeah, let's, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just to looking a, at, You're not coming to Mike for a cypher. Like, there's 80 million yeah. rappers. There's new rappers every day. They're all dope and have a vibe. And, like, that urban music, I love that shit. It makes you feel something. The energy of it. I'm not worried about what they're saying. or if La, I'm, la, ha, ha. Yeah. Laugh to the bank. I'm like, ha, ha. Yeah. Dude, that money bank so hard. Yeah. Though. He's hard. Yeah, Bro, shot these guys are hard. Like, shot us. And, and that energy, that's where hip-hop's gone. Like, you can't. Yeah. yeah. It sounds bad to say, but, like, I'll say it. Like... You know, like the white rapper phase, it came and went. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that genre, the sonically, like how can white, I, can I how white rappers rap. Devil's advocate, I think Jack Harlow is dope. He is. I he, think Jack Harlow holds dude, it down for white rappers. He does, right 100%. Now. And you yeah. know what, though? His shit's easy on the ears. Like, yes. he's in that pocket of like, it's just not. He's the, not over rapping. It's not the typical. You NF, know, I don't, like, you can I don't fuck with NF. I'll say it. I yeah. don't fuck with NF. I don't, but, but like, I've heard <laughs> some... doesn't fuck with NF. I've heard some shit and it's cool, but like, I'm just saying generally, like, there was a yeah. whole subculture of white rappers where when I listen back, I'm like, I can't listen to this. Some of my shit, I'm like this, you know what I mean? But, you know, Blue would be like, oh, that was, uh, it was the time. Like, that time. Like, there was a time where that was cool. Like, that was, for that culture of people, that was cool. No one even bat an eyelash at it. Like, that's, yeah, you know, like the way we would rap. And like, couldn't drop it today, but that moment in time. Exists. Yeah, just like, you know, Tim McGraw probably would never cut, I got a barbecue stain on my white t-shirt right now. Still would be a hit, but like, yeah. it's not what people are cutting at right. the right second. And yeah, and it's not even about race. I'm talking more about just the style of the rap that, that kind of, right. I was birthed in to and like what it's some gangster shit right now yeah and it's yeah and i like it i go to that shit I fucking love but it. i'm not going to me for urban music yeah. like if i was a listener i wouldn't be like the fuck you know what i mean what vibe so like i try to really what i've tried to do is just be in that i, I feel like i'm a mix i love i love the country it's feeling true yeah and i like i like that that urban pocket bounce so like this new sound is where i find where i really exist in it like middle ground like 
it's not your typical rap, you know, tones and it, it's more melodic, you know what I mean? Yeah. But the feeling, it's uh, Charlie Hansen's producing most Charlie of it. Charlie Hansen. You know what I mean? What a perfect guy. Yeah. Has cuts on the biggest country albums, has cuts on the herb. The urban shit, not like we wrote "If I Know Me" and "Heartless" in this room, and yep. my hometown. I met you in this room. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Our first Full night in was right here. The couch was back there. Yeah, yeah. And we were Sheesh. fucking. We were just freestyling and making. Ra- yeah, it was a great time. What? Oh, you the f- you're right. Oh, Our you're right. First meeting was at. You're hey, right. Since no Versace. Yo, we should do. Can yeah, we? I don't do, remember anything. Hey, can we do live in La Vida Local? Speaking of bar taco, yeah. yeah. Not hear that. Let's do a little. We're gonna do a little segment right now. You just remind. This is a Let's great, great segue. <laughs> no, I thought you not really into. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you met at the taco shop. I was like, okay, thank God. Thank God we touched on that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so live in La Vida Local. You've you've been to uh Rational. you've been in Nashville three or four times now. Um what where's your favorite bar to drink at? This segment's about, you know, saying your favorite places in okay, Nashville. So favorite things I, to do. I have an opinionated take on this. Yeah, good. It's what it's for. I'm living uh I'm living you see where I, you saw where I'm living. Like, you see how we're living. <laughs> you see what the fuck we're doing. Yeah, you, nah. you follow me on Instagram, it's just Mike now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but you, the, the part of town, the part of yeah. town, we're like right downtown on First and Broadway, like yeah, right in the Godway. mud. Yeah, on the water, on the river. <laughs> yeah, the, on the river. Watching the dead bodies float Just by out dead there. dead bodies <laughs> and oil. Yeah. Um, but I've, you know, I've been here a handful of times and I already know like the local, you know, like the nightlife in regards to the nightlife, like the local spiel more or less is like, yeah, like Midtown's the vibe. Like Broadway's for like f- fucking tourists, you know. Yeah. Like, so I'm doing the Midtown thing. I fuck with it, right? I like this. I'm just like, whoa, this this might not be enough for the big guy. Well, Broadway, yeah, right. But that's why you like Broadway for what I don't like Broadway for. Yeah, what do you not like it for? It's 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 too much. <laughs> it's too much. It's overstimulating everywhere I look. I was I was literally today uh, down there, and I, I was sitting on the sidewalk waiting on my truck, and uh, tractor trailer full of females. Tractor trailer full of females. Mm-hmm. Oh, tractor trailer full of females. And Sounds so kind of awesome. I, I called Ray. <laughs> no, but see. What's the problem there? It's not. Here's the problem. <laughs> it's gold and it's round. Anyway. <laughs> so, so, True. So I called Rafe. I called Rafe. I says, I said, what am I? North, North. I said, I says. I said. <laughs> I says. <laughs> hey, I says. I'm a family guy. So, <laughs> so I called Rafe and I was like, bro. Broadway's a zoo right now. I was like, I also just saw this blind guy, and I can't tell if I feel bad for him or I'm jealous. Somebody get me home, dude. Yeah, so right. you love Bro- I like Midtown because it's low key, losers, thirteen people. I'm not brushing elbows. Yeah, yeah. Green tea shot, cold Look, we beer. Live, we lead very different lifestyles. Completely. But we have a lot of the similar tastes, so it's an interesting Baseball. conversation. <laughs> Baseball. Yeah, but we but, have that in common. But I don't agree. Here's why. Okay. I went out a few nights. One night went out Monday night solo, just me and Versace. Just rare, rare for me to be out in the public s- sphere without like the guys. Like I, I, I pick and choose my spots, and then I send it completely as hard as I can. Big so, time, like, Dennis Quaid and the rookie move. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm out on a Monday, just being a weirdo out there. I'm like, let's go get a drink. Ends up turning into 15 drinks, you know. And I'm hopping around, and and you know. You, you would have this even more so, just like very quickly, I got plugged in with some of the owners. So I was, you know, navigating easily. I know there's lines that that's I don't like when it's like lines and too busy, right? But I got to, my point of saying that is like, I got to experience like five or six spots and they have fucking five floors. Oh, yeah. They're, and the first yeah. floor is very low key. Yeah. It's like, here's the thing. We have one good bar. Everybody that, goes to the rooftop, right? Is that what? Right. No, but I'm saying like, if you want the low key, you got the low key. First floor. And you got 15 fucking versions of it. So if you don't like this spot, you just go next door. And there's, and like, it felt like there was a bunch of, there was a vari- more of a variety than what I thought initially. Like, you see the zoo and the mayhem, but like, there's actually a lot of levels and a lot of like offerings of vibes. Like, I was like, I actually really. S- Paradise Park is, the, did you get to Paradise Park? I don't think so. That's my favorite bar on Broadway. Okay. They shut we'll it check down her out. for forever. And it used to be. Good. It's got. Yeah, now that's back open. It's got, got, that, they lit, the eyes lit up yeah, over there. Paradise, Paradise Park, like, 
now it's the newer version, but it's still got turf floors. There's a car parked in the middle of it. You can sit in the car. Sounds awesome. Uh, I don't know if they still do. I think they probably do three dollar pitchers, and yeah, three three dollar pitchers. Yeah. of beer sounds awesome. Was like a dollar corn dogs. What what's their what's their snack or something? I don't think they have the food machine. I'll go to Paradise Park with you on Broadway. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm gonna get your ass out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you're your father now. So yeah, there's Paradise Park. You guys are quick over there. Place looks awesome. Yeah, I mean, dude. To be honest, like, look, I didn't grow up in Nashville. You're you're a little used. You're a little used to it. You know yeah. what I mean? And and I get that is different. I get the hoopla. That's like kind of. It's a little much. Like I literally was out there hungover on our deck today. I'm like eating a steak and cheese. I'm like, all right, let's figure this thing out. <laughs> uh, me and Charlie. Ran, <laughs> me and Charlie. Me and Charlie ran late last night. Yeah. Um. I was, and I was at his house this morning, but he was he was in bed with the door locked. It was like probably noon. Oh, you were over at yeah. his spot. Kyle had to come out and give me some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was. We. I dropped him off there around what six a.m. today. Yeah, he, yeah. He texted me at seven, and I knew that was not a good morning text. Me and Charlie had some catching up to do. You know, yeah. sometimes you gotta share a whiskey bottle and just yeah. catch up. Well, by the way, we're we're getting together this next week and gonna yeah. knock that shit out. Yeah, we got to. Um, but my point is like being fresh here and like. You know, coming in, not really having a f- true Nashville experience. It really is special vibe down there. I mean, my my story of today was I was eating steak and cheese and I'm hungover. And I'm like, it literally sounds like I'm living at a theme park. Like, they 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 load onto the buses right behind our ha- our like our building. Yeah, and just everywhere across the bridge, behind me, under me. Like you would think they never ran around on a fucking Blue Girl Central. You're at the fucking nucleus of fucking Nashville. Oh my now God. that's fire. If you're gonna if you're not from Nashville and you're gonna come be in Nashville, you I have fucking love you it. You have you have the best fucking spot ever. And like, dude, I went yeah. over there's a fucking Taco Bell that cantina, right? And I go out Taco Bell Cantina. Which yeah, sucks you, that it's right there because I just end up I'm gonna be fat. I'm gonna be fat. It's good taco. It's, be, it's the best taco. It is Bell. good. But like I go in there and there's like a guy like kind of looks like you. Like brown hair. I'd like you to fucking say what that means. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's literally dressed like you. Okay. Versace. Was he not dressed like him exactly? Yeah. He had more tattoos. Elaborate. Versace's You'll be there. Like me. You know, big, big burly guy. Big burly guy. Big no strong, big strong guy. No sleeves. I am strong, dude. I'm fucking yoked. <laughs> <laughs> Show us. Show us. <laughs> yeah. Let him fly. Let him fly. But no, dude. Way, these microphones are built like trucks they are these are great mics sm7 S- sm7 lives they're the best little freestyle in the yeah. room mics too sorry it's the first time i let it fall it's his first drop hey it's all right it's fine don't worry about it i'm um, not worried about it dude <laughs> but so anyways dude, this guy looked like me at taco yeah, he, taco bell he's singing he's well, my, my point is you go into taco bell Probably no and there's one. literally a fucking like there's a full-blown performance, and he's talented, and he's, like, singing his heart out to, was like, four Bo people. Tillman? I'm not even kidding. It's probably Bo you, Tillman. You remember buddy, his name? Bo Tillman. It was Bo Tillman. Dude, I guarantee you it was Bo Tillman. It might have been Bo Tillman. I taught him how to play guitar when he was, like, in third grade on probably. Tom Sweet Home Alabama. He looks like, an, like a He like looks, a yeah, sunglasses. Yeah, dude, I'll tell you right now. It's Bo Tillman. Yeah, pull him up. There's no doubt. Dude, I'll bet money. Does he have full full tattoos? Never had a tattoo in his life. Not him. Wasn't Bo Tillman. No, it wasn't Bo Tillman. Let's move forward. <laughs> Let's get back to the let's get back to the general point here. Um, it's super. It's really as a musician, like I totally understand. There, they talk about the culture here, and like this is Music City, and it really is, bro. Like yeah. everywhere when I everywhere I go down there, someone's really like pouring their heart into a microphone, and there's five people, and half of them don't care. And I've never, like, seen that, really, or experienced it at that level. I've never done it. Like, as soon as I got on, you know, my first time ever singing, like, it was a show of mine. Right, and right, people. right. So, like, I, and I know we talked on yours, and you would do that. You would go yeah. play for tips and shit. I mean. Those four-hour sets is, the, they're usually playing three to four-hour sets. Yeah. And, like. What do you do? You know, it's, it's inspiring, though. Like, I, I'm in my room making music. You know, I make music in my house, and I'm. Alone for the most part, and um, that's how I like to make it, honestly. But going out there, living down here, and just walking out there and getting that energy from people like that's and, awesome. And really, really, I left Taco Bell inspired. I never thought I would say that. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, th- dude, that's the hottest spot right now for, like, that's a cool gig to get. Is it really? Right now, I mean, it opened a, not I even love a that. month ago. It's just so many talented yeah. people here, and everyone's trying, and, and everyone just, it's about the music, and it's refreshing coming from Los Angeles where it's not about the music, you know? Yeah. It's really not. It's oh. about everything else. Right. And that's why I needed to get out of there, you yeah. know, because I was just like, I don't even get any energy from the people here. I actually, they drain my energy, you know, like when I come out here, I go out, I'm inspired by like just walking out, you know, out on Broadway. I hear live music everywhere. I, pe- music is pumping through these people's veins. The people, there's people at the Kid Rock, like there's a band playing there. They're fucking murdering it in front of like 800 people jammed. They're going fucking nuts. Every person in there is having a blast like that doesn't yeah. exist in la yeah no it's or true. really in a lot of places nashville's one of a kind like that and it really is i felt it i felt it i'm really happy i lived because i was i if i had my choice i wouldn't have lived where i'm living and the, the place is, is is awesome obviously but it's not about it i'm more of like a space you know i would like a little land and fucking you know i like i like for most of the time back to the point even about going out like I like to live a private life for the most part. Mm-hmm. And that sounds stupid to say because I make content and it's public, but I'm saying in my day-to-day life, like I don't leave the house that often. Mm-hmm. So when I do go out, I want all the hoopla. Yeah, That's what I'm going out for. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I don't, you know, like, like we said, we live different lives. Like I don't, you know, I'll drink, I won't drink for three, four days, five days. So when I'm going to drink, I'm drinking. Yeah, You know what I mean? And I want to be around a bunch of fucking girls going by on buses yeah. looking for, looking for some, you know what I mean? A good time. <laughs> Extracurricular. Looking for some look for some what? Yeah, dude. looking for just looking for a good time, you Stay know? And, and I'll be a part of it, you know? Yes. And that that's kind of my whole outlook on it. So I went from like being a little discouraged about the nightlife in Nashville to like I had a few nights in Broadway and I was like, this is fucking awesome. So yeah, the, now the mix of going back and forth to the midtown and the Broadway scene is really amazing. I love it. I like where this is going. I like where this is going. <laughs> You're going to stab her? (laughs) Yo! Oh, my God. It's got to go down in history. It's got to go down in history. You would think that was your first one. (laughs) It was not my first one. That's a God thing. That's a God thing. That's a God thing. Hey, the the same thing happened on the... Hilarious. (laughs) What are the odds? Yeah. Let's, let's do it again, and I'll do it with you. I'll, I'm gonna walk you through it. Here, dude, that is that's comedy. Are you sure you want to switch to this partnership? I guarantee it. It's over. Yeah, I guarantee it. Foley looked like. I think I broke. Yeah, Foley looked like you dropped your baby off the balcony. He was like. Dude, I went up. I, w- I was too fucking. Honestly, I saw it happening it was too. Too impulsive, and I was too eager. You didn't have her latched on. You didn't have her latched on at all. You got. I'm gonna walk you through it. We'll walk you through it. I've never seen that happen. I've never seen that happen either. And I've done a lot of these. <laughs> Thank you, boys. No, this is actually gonna be a great segue. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you a tutorial. This is great. The entire. The entire bears on the ground. I'm fucking dying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not Comes. Chuck Butt is, is somewhere going crazy. Yeah. Hey, so these are actually the new ones, though. So let's use these. That's, that was the that's, w- that's why this happened. That's what happens with the Chuck Butt Chug uh, 1.0. It, it really is. No, no, no. no. That was a user error. Oh, this one's nice and cold, too. It's going to be a little brisk. It's sitting in the freezer. It's going to be a little hard. I'm it. geeking out. Our pet's heads are falling off. So Dude, that was... <laughs> Honestly, that happens, More than too. I'm willing to admit with wet Not pants. Not Chug Bud's got to be fucking living. Right <laughs> yeah, not Chug Bud's having the <laughs> best <laughs> day ever. <laughs> Dude, Christmas this is here. literally... He's going to jerk off this. <laughs> <laughs> Who's not Chug Bud? <laughs> not <Exactly>. Chug Bud. <laughs> it ain't Chug Bud. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> That's good enough. Uh... Oh, fuck my entire existence. All right, let's do this again. I'm going to do it with you. I'm going to put your Stevenson Ranch hat on. <laughs> All right. You cracked a beer. You've done a bunch of these, but we're giving you a tutorial anyway. Yeah, yeah. Show them how it's done. Put her on there. Here's, here's where you go wrong. You got to just make sure she's there. Make sure she's on and secure. Don't now, hold her from up here. <laughs> Get your key. I just can't believe it. <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> oh man. <laughs> He's like, we need to cut the, everything. Cut the tape. I think it's good. We gotta reset the whole podcast. I don't know about. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. This, I don't is, know. this I don't stage. Know. I just want to be an example of what not to do. Yeah, that's just not how you do it. Now we get. A, now we get. Now we get. I might have messed it up. I'm, I'm like no. a big fidget with the mic guy. Yeah. Okay. Fidgeting with digits. Here's where. Here's where we went wrong. All right. <laughs> Lift her up. There you go. All right. All right. Yeah. We'll clap for the gallery. We got through it. Ugh. But great segue into the 2.0. I love oh, what it's cold. I love when I showed you when I showed you like, oh, I didn't even notice. Like we took the uh, like there's a Velcro that was like kind of Here, troublesome on us. Yeah. This is a rough and rowdy. Rough and rowdy. I love that. Um, We're about to start doing it. used to be a Velcro little thing here. Yeah, see, that's the point, though. That's the exact point. Like, after using it for a bit, like, the Velcro would come off, and then it'd be just a string hanging. So we got this little pocket here. And she she fastens on a little better, so we don't have those mishaps as much, you know? We'll talk about Chug Buds for just two seconds. Yeah. I mean, you were, when you came on that tour. I was in the room. I was in the room when you met the OG Chug Bud guy. Wow. In Chicago, yeah, on Weed Street, yep, and um, we had a good, we had a good one. Yeah, that was awesome, and and I just remember thinking, wow, and now here we are. I'm ripping Chug Buds. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, dude. and now your Chug Bud is a new sponsor of the podcast. Yes, let's just say you might be, you might have been, Woo! you might have been thinking that's not a not a Chug Bud poster. And you're right. You are Chug, Chug Bud. Bud. Even, though, even though that debacle, you are Chug Bud. You are Stevenson Ranch. You're the whole thing. You're the whole, in, in the words you're of the Elvis, whole kit and caboodle. In the words of Elvis Presley, I am. <laughs> oh, that was God. Thank you to not Chug Bud for the podcast going. Oh, yeah. dude. But, uh, look. Look, Hunter, this is for you, specifically. <laughs> Fucking thank you, seriously. I've, I'm, I'm about to text you as soon as we're done recording. I would like to thank them for all this. They helped get me here. Mm-hmm. But he knows. I mean, he's he's fans of the movement, too, dude. Yeah, yeah, Chug yeah. Bud. It had to happen. Yeah, I mean, look. I can't post anything, I can't without, t- I can't post anything without people commenting, what about Chug Bud? <laughs> what the fuck, man? Where's the Chug Bud? <laughs> I turned my comments off one time because I, I love that because I thought it was I thought the other company was going to get upset with how many yeah. comments were coming in. Hey, we have a real we got. I mean, obviously, our fans are are fucking awesome. Like that's Great how fans. that's how I've made it this far, and you know, because it's not a it's not a monstrous fan base. It's never been like you have to sort out. Mike Stud or Mike or any of this really. You kind of have to sort it out. It has to come to you in the sense where like. I'm not everywhere. I'm not on TV. I'm not on your playlist. You know, like there's, there's, it's not being promoted to you really ever. It's right. like somehow it integrates its way into your life. So like my point of saying that is like, we've been able to curate it and keep it that way over time. So like when we do, like, that's why I knew what I could do with this, you know, yes. and this, I flew him out on the tour you were on. The kid had an idea. He had a, a small business. He was making them in his garage, like by himself and, and, um, sent it to me and, we kind of had a, a bell go off when we saw it and we had it at the house in LA and people started doing them and I saw what was going on and I was like, you know, I think it was Foley who was like, yo, you know, so Super we work. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm like, yo, where are you from? You know, like he wanted to pay me to p- do a post and he was like, yeah, like this, I just, you know, this is important. Like I'm spending all, all my money. Like it was like a, eight grand or 10 grand posts. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, how about I, f- you know, we, we have a tour starting. I'll fly you to Chicago. He lives kind of close. Yeah. And, uh, or I think maybe even drove. Yeah. I don't even know if he flew and came and met us. And right out of the gate, it was the first conversation I had. I was like, yo, I j- let me partner with you, you on this. And like, let me explain why I'm the best strategic partner for this. Right. And he already kind of, he's like, dude, I literally tried to get this in front of you like a year ago when I first made the first one. And I was, you know, so there was, there was synergy there. And also like, he didn't have the means or the understanding to really like grow the, you know, we, we were pretty established in monetizing to our fans and the infrastructure of running e-commerce business. And obviously I had your merch does really well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've done, we've really like, we went through the trenches with it. We did it all ourselves. So like a lot of the learning curve and, and we got our ass kicked for a handful of time profit p l like really really managing the the infrastructure of it so that like 
it's profitable and ran properly. And and by this time, we were just really arriving there with that stuff. So I had a lot of confidence in, in like how we could do it. And also just like, hey, man, like, look, you could you could pay people and take these risks to post. And like, I, I like that. I like that idea for growth. Or you let me partner and I'll post it fucking 70 times before they even go on sale. To yeah. the point where... But fan, my fans were like, what the fuck is that? And where can we get one? Right. For a while. Right. So then when we, you know, by the time I dropped it, they were fucking flying off the shelves. You yes. know what I mean? And as fast as we could make them, we're making them in my garage. They'd sell out in fucking hour, two hours. We'd go through like 2,000 units of it. Yeah. So, and my point to him was just like, dude, I'll do this with my fan base, but I'm going to get it. I'll get it essentially like all my homies out in LA, all these influences and kids I knew. I was like, yeah, yeah. I'll make this. We can make this a thing. And this was kind of before TikTok started to boom off. Like right. the way I think TikTok was just beginning or in beta at this time. Yeah. But yeah. like I got, you know, it got around Los Angeles enough and I I was able to get it with some cool people enough to where like it organically took off on TikTok. And I mean, it was a huge, huge turning point for us where we, you know, started to really reach like a new audience because Again, our fans are fucking awesome, but it's gone to the athlete community. Yeah, it's and gone. That. We're yeah. you're growing outside of even the Mike thing yeah, right. or Stevenson rant, any of that, you know. Right. Um, and that was kind of my initial pitch to him. So I ended up acquiring the whole company. He's he's in still. I think I was you know three percent or five percent, and yeah, gave him a million dollars. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's amazing. He made a million. He's also, a, good for him, dude. Yeah, and like to making be, something to be completely fair. Yeah. Like I'm gonna make a lot. We're gonna make a lot of money on that, right? And you could say that was a bad deal, but I truly think it would never, it wouldn't even have gotten there. He would have never made a million dollars profit. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's really not to say never, but there was just so many. Like, we're still in legalities. Like, Yo, yeah, we're still like the patent protections and all, because it really got popular pretty fast. And there was a lot. Like, I was three, four hundred. Yeah, like 300K in expenses where he could have never, the company would have never been able to sustain it. You know what I mean? So. Right. That was, and I really, like, I'm good friends with him to this day, and we he's still part of our company and our discussions all the time because I respected his understanding of that. You know, yeah. like, he knew it was a rocket I He knew it was a rocket idea once we started selling them the way we were, and they yeah. were growing, and, you know, and, and it was just like, look, you could you could hoard the, or, like, you do this right. I'm the guy, and, like, I'll grow this really as, as much. I'll put my everything into it. And I'll, you know, give them a bunch of money, which which worked out, you know. So it's everyone's everyone's winning, but it, I really do. I'm so excited to have you on board. But there's so many things in the works. You oh, know, yeah, I'm gonna sure. do a ton of activations with people, like even you know, just bar stool and all these people. We're gonna, gonna a lot of cool things we do this year. Right. So I'm excited about it. This Dude. is something that wouldn't exist if I if I was on a record deal and shit. I probably wouldn't be doing like the entrepreneur. Yeah, you know, we spread them just fly somebody in and say hey. Well, we spend a ton of time on, on this, yeah. really. I spend a lot of time on this with, yeah. with Foley and and my guys to to manage these businesses and grow them and shit. And if Stevenson I, Ranch is also just while we're on businesses. Uh, while I was waiting on my truck after we ate at Blanco today, also Blanco. On Broadway, bro. Fifth and Broadway. Haven't been either. So good. But Stevenson Ranch hat, scene one, said Stevie Daniels, turned around. He said, Steve Earn. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, let's go. Oh, We're yeah. out of here. No, I mean, dude, I've had ton, t there's, <laughs> there's tons of synergy with your fans and mine. And, yeah, it's great. And you, you being up. Uh, we love seeing you wearing this the SR, and it's like, it's just perfect. It, you know? fit, that, it fit great because, honestly, like, I just love how the hat fits. Yeah. You know, like you can have yeah. a cock on it. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. It's just a fit. <laughs> no, but but like all the clothes and Foley's so good at design and shit yeah, too. Like uh I love it, bro. I I love you, Stevenson man. Steve Ernson Ranch. Yeah. Um and I see you thumbing through your mullet. Would you mind taking the hat off and showing yeah. it to the people? Because speaking of fans diverging, look at him. You're covering it with your biceps. Take, look, take look at it. those wings. Look at him. Let him fly. Yeah, I mean, Amy chopped you up too, I mean, right? To be, yeah. To be honest, uh, I don't know what life was like before the mullet. What? I forgot. Fulfilling. It. I forgot it all. Wasn't fulfilling. It's all just. It's all just a blur of. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't godly. It wasn't godly. <laughs> it no. was ungodly. I fucking love having a mullet. 
I don't it's know a why. practical haircut, and I tell people all the time it's a lifestyle, not a hairstyle. <laughs> um, and, and I haven't, I haven't touched mine. Up. I mean, it's still a mullet because it's way longer Yours in the back. Yours is so majestic. Mine's more of a Kenny Rogers right now. Yeah, it is. And I've meant to go that direction. Um, this is purposeful, maybe for the kid, just uh, a little, no, little bit more I, mature look. Or I, I'm working on a little side project where it's kind of in a Kenny Rogers vibe. Okay. So I'm. I, w- I don't mind if I look a little bit like Kenny Stevie Rogers. Rogers. When it ha- Stevie Rogers. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for a minute, I was rocking the bullet heavy, where it was just straight bowl across the front and then drop down Tennessee curtains in the back. I just saw a picture. I want to say it was the picture we used for the to promote oh, yeah, the, to promote the Y N K podcast. With the deals we just did. in front of the deer. And you, I think the one you just posted on Instagram too. You had like the straight across with, and I I literally I was just hung over and late to come here, and I was like. It literally is just majestic. It's the word. <laughs> like, I don't know if I could have that kind of mullet, maybe. I have my own little version of it. But it just feels nice to have some lettuce finally, you know? I've, I've always had short hair. Always Did, had, like... Oh, yeah. I was going to say, like, because baseball, the move was the yeah, flip. Like, For do, me, I couldn't wait till my hair could flip out behind the hat. Always had, like, just you know short saying? hair. Flip. Short hair, little back, like, fade in the back, you know? Yeah, the yeah, north, yeah. Northeast, like... Yeah, so what, what, kind of, what kind of high schooler were you? Oh, my God. I mean, dude, I was like, I went, so I went to a school, um, man, you'd, you'd probably be shocked if you knew how I was, I got kicked <laughs> out of middle school for fighting. I used to get in fights all the time. I saw one video of you probably from that time. Maybe it was, when were you wearing Tim's? That, that's like high school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm not going to be shocked. <laughs> Tell me about the, you had a buzz cut in Tim's and yep. no shirt and like some baggies yep. and you look like you were selling dime bags yeah, I and did. would fuck somebody up. I was really, said, no, I don't want to. I was like bag. really, really in the hood parties and shit. Like I was, yeah, yeah. You look out here. Dude. Like I, I was, cause I was a basketball player. I went to a good basketball school and like really, I always, I got in a lot of fights at the white school and then I went over to the, you know, like I went over, I got kicked out of that middle school and I was more inner city. And I, I didn't fight as much. I got I got along with people better. And I don't know why. I, I had a really, really, really big ego. Like, and I wasn't super outwardly cocky. But, like, I had this crazy, like, if you challenged me at all, I wouldn't even be mad and I'd fight you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'd, I'd be like, just fucking let's fight. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. seriously. And it, I got in trouble in college. I had a one time where I fucked this dude up and, like, almost got in real trouble. I, I know that story. Yeah, serious. I your mean, hand, I'll share your, it. You, you don't have the best hands in the world. No. My, my I hand. mean, your hands are fine. My hands are banged <laughs> but up. physically hurt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me hear that story. The the Yeah, we get yeah. that you were an asshole in high school. Let's hear about how you almost killed a guy. <laughs> 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 let's, no, let's I, not. Dude, it's a really crazy story. Yeah, yeah. I was... Uh, my 21st, the night of my 21st birthday. And I had just, I had just put out college humor. And there's some, we're getting out of the bar. Obviously I'm wasted. It's my 21st. Were you out of college? Birthday. Yeah, I was in college. The, in I, college. This was, this was in DC. So okay. dude, I didn't even, I didn't really even tell you. Okay. Like, well, it's not part of my bigger picture. I went to Georgetown for half a semester. Okay. So, cause, because I had Tommy John, I missed two seasons. So Delaney I had, went to American. I had, what'd you say? Delaney went to American. Did she? Yeah, yeah. I was, that's close by. Yeah. I used to hang out with girls from there. Yeah. For a little bit. No, my wife. Yeah, not yours. <laughs> Definitely not no. mine. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, I, um, You'd have to go to a library to find her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's a rock star. She was probably making some art somewhere, doing <laughs> something. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely. no, I wasn't hanging out with that crowd. No. I, uh, I graduated from Duke, but I had two years to play and I, you know, I had put out one song. I wasn't like, oh, I'm a rapper. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Right, like, right. it wasn't that vibe at right. all. So I go I go to Georgetown, and then I started putting out some more. And I was playing baseball at Georgetown. I was starting to. And that's when this happened. So, like, I go to a new school. I'm a white rapper. Yeah. Like, a song's kind of moving a little bit. It's my birthday. This dude starts chirping. Like, like you're, you know, saying shit to me, whatever. yeah, yeah. 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 At a bar, right? Is Out it? outside the bar, we just got out, and man, in a matter of like thirty seconds, I just, you know, got out of hand, just <laughs> fucked the dude up, right? And I, I, you know, I'm standing over him, just a few punches, really, standing over him. He's standing over. I, him. I look, I look up. There's a f- undercover police officer right there. He's like, turn around. He was oh, just in no. street clothes, just happened to be on the street corner. Oh no! Saw the whole thing, really. So I go to jail. I go to the big house, D.C. Like I'm, I'm in. I mean, I have blood jail, spattered jail. on my. We gonna go to jail. Yeah. We gonna go we to gonna jail. We gonna raise hell. Yeah. yeah. 
I won't, I won't, might need to see the light yeah, of day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, I, I, and think about it. It's my 21st birthday. Oh. The whole next day, I don't have any calls. I'm waiting to see a judge. Um, you know, people think I'm dead. Like I've disappeared, you know, like all people from home, I'm in a new city. They can't get in touch with me for, oh. I had like 800 missed calls, you know, like it was oh. my 21st birthday too. Yeah, and I went oh missing. God, dude. Yeah. So finally, you know, I see, I see a lawyer. They're like, yo, this, this is like a felony assault. Dude's fucked up. He's like, you know. So what was broken on him? His, his, his orbital, his orbital orbit, bone, and his sp spine, his fucking nose, and yeah, it was yeah, bad. Orbital, it was, dude, hate the orbital. Yeah, and um, I'm like, oh my god, like, you know, I was in a very positive place in my in my life. Like I was, you know, I had a had a tough time with the injury. You know, it was I really my whole kind of life kind of got with the Tommy John rapidly. Yeah, yeah rapid. right. You were you were going for the league. You were going to the league. You're yeah. all American. Yeah. Hey, Duke. I mean, like, yeah, I would have definitely, I would have definitely, you know, been. I, I can't say I w was definitely a big leaguer. I would have definitely been like a first two, three round guy, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that doesn't mean you're going to be a big leaguer, but you, you know, I was could had a have good shot. Of, had a good shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I had a good shot. And I was just like, what the fuck happened? I remember, like, I was sitting in jail all day, and I was just like, wow. Like, I went and saw a lawyer. They're like, yeah, you're, you're seeing like this is a felony assault. It's it's got a lot of damage, you know. And two weeks, like, I get out, you know, I tell my parents, it's like the worst, this is the lowest point of my life. Right, I'm just right. like, what? I'm a white rapper. My, You know, I went yeah, from being a yeah. fucking all-American baseball player at Duke to being a white rapper who's in jail. With like, got arrested with, with a potential with felony. A potential felony. Oh, you're straight. And I'm going to get kicked I'm thinking, I'm, yeah, yeah. Thinking I'm going to get kicked out of Georgetown and yeah. shit. And I'm just like, wow, this is terrible. I just get a lucky ass break, man. I get a, I get a call 10 days later. It's like, the criminal charges are being are being uh, dropped by the state. They checked the camera footage. He actually approached me. I hit him first, but he like pushed me first. He like came up and like engaged me. So technically speaking, like you were given, defending yourself. Well, yeah, like that's actually how the law works. You know what I mean? And Sheesh. and yeah, you know, like it literally was like a call from. I was just yeah. like, oh my god, like wow, because I, I I never crossed my. I knew I hit him first, you know. Right. So then I end up getting sued civilly and I, st I started my like th this is like why I look at life the way I look at it because I've read a lot of these like sp I've gone down a spiritual path and like understanding the the steps to where you get in life like real shit like I don't know if I would have even really gone after Mike Stud the way I did if I I started it in debt I, I had to pay him 40 grand for or for you know, met, I lost the civil suit right, right, or right. settled and had to pay, you know, cover for damage or whatever. So I didn't have any money. My parents didn't have any money. They were they were already in debt for covering, you know, some of my school. Yeah. I'm not asking wow. for more money. So I'm like, yo, like, I don't even know what the hell I'm going to do. I have no interests. Like, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to go to Wall Street. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm still trying to be a baseball player at this point. But I'm just like, yo, like, all of a sudden the Mike Stud thing started to happen. And I was just like, yo, like. This How long did it take you to pay that off? Once, probably a year. That's I mean, incredible, I, though. Think about it. Yeah, I mean, forty grand profit from just yo. That, you know, that's so. We got, sick. we got pretty. It happened pretty quick, though. Like, like yeah, I said, I that's incredible. Put like two or three songs out, and then I started. You know, I'm getting booked for five grand, three grand, and I was playing three shows a week. Yeah, hustling. Right, right. right you know, because right. I, mean? I was just like, I knew I needed to pay this back, and you know, I, I look back at that. And I'm just like, even if if that didn't happen, I don't know. I can't say that I would have went after it. I left Georgetown because it's a compliance issue. You can't be a student athlete and make money and do, oh, wow. and do shit NCAA. like that and like sell your likeness. Like, so, you can so now. I, yeah, you can now, but yeah, not right, then. Right, right, right. That's so what I'm I had to leave. I dipped. I dipped. And my, everyone was just like, what? I started going on tour. Wow. Wait, so. Where did you graduate from? I graduated from Duke. This is Georgetown grad. I just left like oh, gotcha, one gotcha. semester in. I didn't. I didn't finish. You know. Wow. But I, I still had. I have years of eligibility. So, so do back. I. I got, dude. No, I was <laughs> me joking. and Ernest go back. Yo, I was joking with Lipscomb because when I was when I dude, think about this. <laughs> think about me in the shape I'm in now, legitimately throwing 85 miles an hour. Yeah. That's what. I, that's where I'm at. Pretty good. <laughs> like I could go. I could go play at a D2 school right now. I could pitch. Drink. Yeah, that chug bud. Once you wet your wet, once it hits your lips. Yeah. Um, let's use. 
let's go try out for it. Let's do an open tryout. I'm down. And get content. I'm down. It'll be super we rip fun. chug buds in the parking lot of a minor league stadium. 100%. You know what we're wearing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're dressing. Yeah. We're 100%. I'm we're down. We're playing toss. It'll yeah. be super fun. We've never played catch. We got to play catch. How hard were you throwing in high school? What were you? Were you? I was like high 80s in high school, and then when I got to Duke, it just jumped up. I was like, you know, low mid 90s. What did you top out at? Were you 95? 95. Yeah. 95. And what were you? What was I don't. I don't really. I mean, what I was your a, set? You I had, had a good pa- little deuce. Power slider. I threw the fuck out of it. I was a closer. Oh yeah. So I really was just fastball slider. I would get ahead and I just slide it on the death. Like were you wild? Mm-mm. God. Yeah, no, I was pretty, I was, I wouldn't say I was like, uh, like a command guy, but I was in the zone and yeah, I was, yeah. my ball was, I didn't throw a straight ball at all. It was yeah. moving a lot. Dude, that was, that was what blew my mind when I threw a pin uh, a couple months Had ago. Had some action on it? More than I did when I played. Cause now they got the technology so crazy. They got the spin. Yeah, yeah, detector. yeah. And all guys care about now is spin rate anyway. I wish that had that then. Oh, check this, check this stat out, bro. I have the second highest spin rate on my curveball at Lipscomb University currently. Wow. Good I'm hammer. I have my bullpen back there. So you were a pitcher, yeah? I was a pitcher. Mm-hmm. And But, yeah, dude, I am I got a ball side break. Like, if I'm if I aim, if I'm I'm going over the plate, the shit's breaking off the plate the inside now. It's a yeah. fastball, and I'm throwing four seam. I, mean, I think I'm just – maybe my arm slot's a little lower now. 100%. Because I – when I played third, I def my ball's going like I have to think different arm angle inside all day. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I I, I used like being friends with Stroman. I mean, he's 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 at his peak right now. He's totally changed the way he pitches. It's all about action. He throws he throws like, thank you, sir. Hey, how are you? Hey, he how throws are like ninety percent sinkers now. You know what I mean? Like he's literally throwing like majority sinkers, and, and it's his, his timing is so. He just far. has so much action on it, dude. You know, and it's about action, it really is. These yes. guys can hit 110 if it's straight, right? They, they really can. Yeah, and dude, why is velocity? What it, you were a pitcher, right? What, what is it? Why is are mechanics changing? Are guys just stronger? Evolution. Now? I think all the above, yeah. yeah, it's all the above. It's evolution, though. Because the velocity is insane. I mean, 100 miles an hour is like, there's what, 20 average, guys in the league? Super average. It's like, whatever. Yeah, he throws hard. Yeah. Like, if you throw 95, it's like run of the mill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're getting ripped. Yeah, if you throw 95, you better have something yeah, nasty. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's wild to me, bro. It's crazy. I mean, dude, think about the basketball. Like, if you look at the NBA, yeah. Like, these guys, like, they don't fucking miss. And Era comparisons fuck- are weird in, in sports. But, dude, they're right now. fucking yeah. huge. They're like 6'11 with jumpers and. Yeah. Fucking like playing on the wing, like it's not normal, bro. Like traditional centers don't even exist anymore. Be- like if you were six ten or above, like you were down the block, like, and you tall, like you yeah. bounce some throw, fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like these guys are literally like from thirty five feet crossing over, step back, pull. Yes. They're six ten, six ten, same skill set, Steph Curry. It's crazy. It's literally wow. eliminated the center position. It's like not a thing. Yeah, yeah. LeBron goes down and plays center. Yeah, they could, to. like these fuckers, they fuck like it's just a human Sports, evolution. Man. Sports are crazy right now. I know. Um, Olympic 1996 Atlanta. This is actually a Stroman hat. I used to have that. Stole hat. it from. Stole it from it, his house. I saw it earlier. I used to have that hat, straight flat bill. Mm-hmm. I was at the 96 Olympics. Fire. Um, competing? Would, would you compete in? Huh? You were competing. I was competing <laughs> in the snow cone eating contest. In the infant. As a four year old. Four year old. Yeah. Um, there's a picture of me there. With a, I had like a Mickey Mouse Olympic shirt on, and um, I was on a leash. My parents had me on, <laughs> like my whole life, I've been on a leash. Are you serious? A Metaphor- dog leash. I had a leash connected <laughs> to my. Not metaphorical, really. No, I was on a fucking physical, <laughs> maybe a five foot long. So your dog parents leash. were Regina was a leash was a leash guy, leash gal. At the Olympics, because there was such a crowd, and I guess child adub- abductions of cute-looking blonde kids it was is, up. It is a thing. And and I just think how much better my life would have been had I just gone ahead and gotten abducted. <laughs> 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 Leave me off the leash, Mom. Uh, I have ass, and I'm going to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it had dude, it makes on, so much sense. You're a leash guy. Had me on a... Yeah, dude, right? <laughs> Connected dots now. Everything's coming together. Yeah, I was on a dog leash for the whole the entire Olympics. <laughs> and every picture of me at the Olympics. There's a fucking oh my god, it's so funny. 
Uh, on Texas Lenny back. She's being a trooper with the baby right now. Oh man, just tell it. Just blame it on me. I was late. It's already my fault. <laughs> it's, it's, it was my fault. Just go into everything. It, just admitting that it's your fault, and you'll be fine. You'll make it through this. Now I can. I feel like there was a point in my life. Every every one of my friends in high school, if some if like beer was left by them, a dip was left on the couch by them. It was always my fault, and the parents just went ahead and accepted it. And it wasn't ever my dip or my beer. Really? Yeah, or is that just how you remember? Is that beer? just how you remember it? No, it really wasn't. Like I remember Michael text Michael Muscolo <laughs> texted me, and he he's probably listening. He texted me one night. He was like, "Hey, I told my mom that uh, that was your, that, that was your dip she found on my couch. Just so you know, yeah, scapegoat guy." <laughs> I was like, "All right, just so I had the story straight." Yeah. You got tough skin from being the scapegoat. You know what I mean? You yeah. Gotta- well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess uh, tough skin. <laughs> Cut myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, legends are. I don't still. I did then. Really? Yeah, for fun. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, I cut myself sometimes. I'm not kidding. I can't take you seriously. No, no, no. I 100 percent cut myself. Yeah, for sure. Like where? Um, well, under here. <laughs> <laughs> so I got this tattoo. So you cut your I fucking had, skin. So you're like here. you're like a. I fucking still have. You can tell where I put cigarettes. <laughs> No, that wasn't more. That wasn't a depression thing. I just kind of then had a friend. Yeah, yeah. Here, I think I got one of my chest. So you're like a wild motherfucker. Like, yeah. you, I mean, I know you are. <clears throat> I know you are. You know, we're wild too. But like, I'm way more settled down than I was. You're like wild. 18 to 21. Yeah. I was like, aren't we all though? Burn me. You know. Yeah. <laughs> what does this feel like if I just cut my? <laughs> I see. I, d- I don't have that bone on my body. I never have. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't need more. Yeah. Thing. I don't know. I was like, and I think. I talked about it the other day on your podcast. How, how, where is it? Funny how that works. I am stone <laughs> <laughs> on your podcast. Yeah, yeah, but how how I came into myself a lot at in the islands. Mm-hmm. Not like came in myself, mm-hmm. but <laughs> maybe. Yeah, but how how I came into myself a lot in the islands and a yeah. lot of that riddled with fear and anxiety s- subsided. Yeah, before would you, the islands. Would you say though, you had a lot of fear and anxiety as as a uh, as like a, you know, older teen. Yeah, like probably all of middle school because I got suspended. I think it. I think it kind of started in the seventh grade. I got suspended for nine weeks for pulling a knife on a kid. And like, so you're like a wild motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in in the um, got suspended for murdering someone. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I, don't know. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Super <laughs> private school. But the lobby in between the auxiliary gym and the main gym, in between the guys' game and the girls' game, basketball game, yep. um, I, like, fake quasi pulled a knife out on a kid I was supposed to spend the night with that night. Like, it wasn't, like, a foe. You know, it was just right. like. But, you know, in private school drama fashion, within 30 minutes, it had gotten back to his mom via girls telling that I I was going to stab Carter and kill him. It's like he was in the auxiliary gym crying. Sorry, Carter. He was on. He was in, He was crying on a friend's shoulder, and like he believed to be true. I was like, "You were there, dude." <laughs> like, he like oh, forgot what gonna, happened. I'm gonna kill you, it wasn't a good look that I had all my pocket knives in my gym bag <laughs> that, <laughs> that night. They're like, "Open but your I, locker." He opens it. It was like 19 <laughs> knives fall yeah, out. It was kind of that way. My mom was like, "Because I just I'd gone to my uncle's farm that weekend and had the knife in my pocket, yeah. my jean pocket. Just, uh, finished mm-hmm. basketball practice, threw my drawers on, had a knife. Good clean on is fun. Hey boy, that's what I said. <laughs> I said, hey boy. <laughs> <laughs> and, so uh, so you get popped for nine weeks out of school? Yeah, they, had to, they went ahead and made a whole example out of me and said... What did uh, Regina say? A lot. A yeah. lot. Um, so immediately, it was me, my mom, Regina, and Carter's mom go down to the coach's office in the girls' locker room, basketball locker room. Okay. This is post. Well, my dad's the girls' basketball coach, so that's uh, where my dad's office is. This is. Oh man, the, your dad's right there. Both games are over. My dad's always right there, dude. Everything that ever happened at school, my parents found out before I found out I did it. You know, it's like before I could, you even know you did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we go down there. My mom's like talking. And I was like, no, I didn't mean. To, I didn't want all this stuff. I, I give my mom the knife. It was, by the way, an American. It had like an American eagle or like an eagle and an American flag, like truck stop knife right unbelievable and i had another case knife and like a case swiss in my duffel bag mm-hmm. so all those get thrown away this is on a friday everybody makes amends mm-hmm. so 
between Friday and Monday, all the word has circulated around all of greater Nashville and all the schools and da, da, da. So I get to school Monday and I'm like just waiting on the call to go to the principal's office because I know that they have to make a judgment. Keith Ernest Smith to yeah, the principal's. Yeah, yeah, so here it is. So I'm sitting, me and Rafe are sitting by each other. Once again, Rafe, been there for all of it. Yeah. Rafe's sitting right in front of me. I'm sitting behind him. And I don't have my, I didn't get anything out of my book bag because I'm just waiting to go to the office and be told. It's the worst feeling. Whether I'm Isn't it the worst? I, I was surprised I even, I thought I was going to juvenile or some shit. Yeah. So. I'm sitting there, and the vice principal leans her head in right before class starts. She goes, uh, Keith, get your book bag. And Miss Cochran didn't know what's happening. She goes, Keith, get your book bag and come to the office with me. And uh, Miss Cochran goes, oh, here, uh, take some papers. Take some, or we'll put the papers on your desk. Get them when you get back. And Rafe goes, he ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, oh, he ain't coming back. So I, remember, I remember going to the office, and yeah, it turned into a nine-week suspension. Uh, I got a job at the family rug store. I got a job at the family rug store where I worked uh, for like six of those weeks. Made a little money. Joined the Y. Got ripped. The best shape of my life. I'm doing thousand push-ups a day like doing squat i'd hit puberty in fifth grade so seventh grade me like i'm like eyeing up juniors in high school like you're a what's bitch. up yeah you're a bitch yeah. i got more of a beard than you what are we yeah. doing here so you're an er you were an early guy super i was later guy. super I, I used to be tall yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be tall everybody yeah. else is four six yeah um but but so I, I got a job got a y membership i would i was homeschooled i'd finish my homework by 10 a.m and then be able to go to the Y and then work till five. And I was like, it's 14. I turned 15 in the eighth grade. But yeah, dude, my anxiety and being told I was a bad kid and all that shit started in seventh grade. And mm -hmm. like, you started to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it ended up being true. Yeah. <laughs> I, bel I believed it and, and, and acted accordingly to the point there was like, I probably wasn't a bad kid in seventh and eighth grade. You see, you're not a bad kid. You're not a bad I'm not a bad dude, You're but there was dude. freshman senior year. <laughs> I think my conscience like didn't wait in the truck, stole the truck. <laughs> my conscience went to Florida because <laughs> I finally ran into it at, at, a, at a Margaritaville yeah. in, in Kissimmee. Oh, <laughs> uh, dad. That's what funny, are you man. drinking? Holy shit, you're my conscience. <laughs> Where have you been all this time? Let me buy you a drink. No, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> oh, my God. I probably shouldn't. Oh, man. Oh, shoot, dude. That's good stuff. I'm so glad you're on the pod. This is I, overdue. I've been waiting. I've been, I'm, I've been are eating. Is everybody good on time? I mean, we've, we're well over an hour. Yeah, this isn't an hour long podcast. This well, can't I, wanna, be. I need to shout out Canes, first of all. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Canes, dude, Raising Canes. The first time I ever had Raising Canes was on the road with y'all. Really? Yeah, because they don't exist here in Nashville. Interesting. We need a Raising Canes. And, and do you want to open a Raising Canes in <laughs> Nashville? Yeah, there's a crystal that has shut down in Green Hills, and there's weeds growing all through it, it should be Raising Cane. I actually think they might be onto something. Hear me out. Nashville fried, like, this is, this is like hot chicken, fried chicken capital. Like, there's so much, or there's so much of that, like, local Nashville vibe where, like, I had this thought the other day driving by Chick-fil-A and there was no one in there. And everywhere we're ever at, we're nomads and we've been in a lot of places recently even, and, like, the Chick-fil-A is always booming. Like yes. it's always booming. And Which LA, Chick Fil A, did you go to over on Eighth? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know my fucking way around town at all. Right. Yeah, it was like a little shitty version oh, location. Oh yeah, okay, because it might it might have been it might have been. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. But I mean, look, my point is, when I th when it went by that, I was like, oh, I've never seen that. I was like, oh, it's because like there's so much there's so much fried chicken, like great chicken yes. options here. You're not really like, oh, I need that. Let me go to Chick Fil A. Like you can go. You know what I mean? Where, like, if you were in L.A. or Scottsdale or wherever we've been, like, you want that, you go to Chick-fil-A. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. There's not, like, those spots. Yeah. So. I just think Cane's is going to be a good Cane's addition. is amazing, though. I love it. Mm. Um, and then also, another thing I want to talk about is American Rust. 
What are you talking about, Blue? I named my dog after you, dog. <laughs> Don't you love that? <laughs> I'm like shitting on the idea. No, I'm saying no, you're shitting on the idea. I'm <laughs> shitting on. I'm like, don't come. They shouldn't come. <laughs> no, I mean, you're in the you're in the hot. You're in the No, 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 no. I said they're onto something. Like they're not in Nashville. Are they trying to come to Nashville? Yeah, they got a Nashville food truck here. Oh, they do. Yeah, yeah. I think a food truck's a good idea. Yeah, go crush it on Broadway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Should make a raisin cane. We should have a raisin canes. We should have one of those raisin canes fucking like uh, bus things to go around. Oh my God. Everyone's eating raisin canes. I love that. Well, there's your idea. Chuck raisin buds canes. and raisin canes. Rolling canes. Yeah, I like it. Cocaines. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of that too. Yeah, oh, there definitely is. I mean, come on. I mean, bridesmaid, bride, bridesmaid on Broadway. I mean, yeah. it screams cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> They're literally screaming. Woo! <laughs> um, Speaking of cocaine, yeah. I have to get home to my son. Yeah. I have to. Yeah, you do. We, we, we could keep going for another hour or two hours. Hey, you can wrap my her up. Wife, my wife's going to take the time to come kill me. If I, if I, he's like, look, I have to go. Look, she's almost on her way. Yeah. Hey, I got to go home. You go, Bubba. We've already, we've already sat and chopped, talked life. Well, I mean, with, with the, we went for about an hour and a half. I was going to say, if you want to hear more of us talk, yeah, go yeah. to his podcast. You never know. Yeah. YNK podcast. Po the, the conversation was very different. Yeah, totally. In That's what way. I'm saying. That's go get go get the other. You know, this yeah. is the peanut butter. Yeah, you want the jelly? <laughs> yeah, go over there and get it. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever had a peanut butter and jelly, but God, pretty good. So good. Uh, oh yeah, that's what you're doing. This just in: <laughs> American <laughs> American Rust available for. <clears throat> This just in. American Rust available for pre-sale on June 4th. There will be a music video dropping with it. And if you don't like fiddles, you can get out. Uh, Wait. It, uh, it comes live on June 4th. <laughs> oh, my God. Everyone. <laughs> this, 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 this whole fucking place has been doused hey. in beer. <laughs> This just in, American Rust will go live June 4th. But you are capable of... <clears throat> This just in, American Rust coming out on June 4th, but it's available for pre-sale right now. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Just Be an Earnest podcast, and this is Mike. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Let's Cheers. Go. Cheers. Cheers. Good stuff. That was actually so good. Just be an earnest. Just be an earnest. Just be an earnest. Just be an earnest.